What's up guys, Econ John here. Welcome to our video series on macroeconomics consumption. In this video, we're gonna talk about modeling consumption under certainty, let's go. For modeling consumption under certainty, we consider a consumer who lives for two periods and possesses the following additive lifetime utility function with no discounting for the future, where capital U is equal to the summation of all little u as a function of consumption at time t, where t goes from one to capital T, where this instantaneous utility function is concave in u. Our consumer has an endowment of A0 and labor income flows of Y1 to YT, capital T, and can save and borrow across periods, just that he must consider his lifetime budget constraint, which is defined as the, the summation of all consumption over all periods, must be less than or equal to this endowment, plus the lifetime labor flows of all uh income yt where t goes from one to capital t to solve for the implications of this model we simply plug our equations into our lagrangian and solve for our first order condition for ct uh, this is again just a standard utility maximization problem subject to constraint and we find that from our first order condition that our marginal utility uh, from consumption must be equal to lambda for maximization of our utility function so what's this mean it implies that our consumption across all periods must be the same for optimal consumption. Um, practically speaking, if we wanna go and find those values, we simply recall a property of sums where we know that if we have the same value over and over again, it's the same thing as multiplying. So going to our uh, budget constraint, we go and we simply change our sum for CT to this T times CT. Um, rearranging this we get this sort of average right where we have our optimal consumption over time is equal to uh, one over t times this endowment plus the lifetime labor flows so by simply looking at the structure of the model we see that consumption in a single period is not determined exclusively by the income in that period rather it's the income over an individual's lifetime i.e their permanent income Mathematically, from this start equation from our previous slide, we define variables on the right-hand side of that equation as permanent income. So again, this showing this equation for the optimal CT as the consumption is determined by this permanent income, right, in that period. So the difference between the permanent income and YT, the actual labor flow, right, for any T, is referred to as transitory income. Thus, the permanent income hypothesis states that the time pattern of income does not matter for consumer welfare. However, this result, the time pattern of income, matters for saving. So saving in the model is denoted simply as ST, right, which is saving at time T is equal to the income at time T minus the consumption at time T. Recalling our, cons our optimal value for uh, CT, which is derived from our previous slides, we go and get the following, where we see that our savings is equivalent to our transitory income, because recall that transitory income is just defined as the difference between YT and our permanent income uh, defined before. Thus, we see that saving will increase when current income YT increases and decreases when YT decreases. Thus, we can explain the fluctuations in savings can be due to the timing of income. However, consumption will remain stable across time for our consumer's lifetime who is certain about the future. So that's our first part in our five-part series on macroeconomic consumption. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.